The Xbox platform boasts some 30 studios creating games from nearly every genre, large and small. The promise of great games from one of the largest publishing arms. It has been a long wait for fans, with about 25 games out already this generation. The roadmap for Xbox looks not just promising, but it could be the most impressive in Xbox history. We're going to break down well over 30 games coming to Xbox, mostly in this console generation and in the upcoming few years, starting with big titles, releasing as early as next month. Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Treyarch promises a wealth of online modes, all new zombies, and a fulfilling campaign set in the future that hopes to bring back the wonder of the well-beloved story modes, with new movement, guns, and so much more. Call of Duty comes to Xbox, and finally, Launching on Game Pass, October 25th, 2024. Flight Simulator is a major upgrade from 2020, not just in gameplay, but higher quality visuals, bringing the planet Earth to life with detailed landscapes and cities. Flight Sim 2024 also brings a ton of actual game modes beyond flying anywhere on the planet. And it's coming to Xbox, PC, November 19th, 2024. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is coming out December 9th, 2024, and soon after on PS5 in early 2025. I previewed the game this summer, and it features a ton of physics-based puzzles like Uncharted Tomb Raider and Skyrim with high production cinematics. All traversal and climbing is in third person, and the first person combat looks like whip and hand-to-hand -hand combat is satisfying, but the revolver gameplay is a bit limited. Expect much more immersion than your typical gory machine game shooter with Indiana Jones, The Great Circle. South of Midnight takes Hazel into a hurricane-torn southern town that is now possessed by demons. The game features third-person combat and traversal with magic weapons, a grapple, and a parasol to flow into explorable areas of this swamping south. Compulsion Games has a lot to prove, and South of Midnight does look impressive. This could be their first big hit, and Xbox has it set for mid to late 2025. Avowed is Obsidian's Pillars of Eternity with first and third person immersive real-time combat, but yet none of the third person combat or gameplay has been shown yet. It was recently delayed to February 18, 2025, but the visuals in combat saw a massive overhaul and impressed reviewers with choice-driven character building and super vibrant and visually striking art style. A vowed move to make room for Xbox's busy end of the year, but it also needed a bit more polish. Expect an engaging hook of RPG wonder and hopefully more than just their best attempt at this new AAA fantasy RPG. Doom The Dark Ages mixes an origin story of Doom Slayer with an ancient meets evolved weapon set, including a Captain America chainsaw shield, bone crushing heavy weapon, flyable dragon, and a titan walking mech. It's rumored to release in May of 2025 on all platforms, and it has not forgotten what makes games great. Blood, carnage, bullets, and brutal glory kills. Fable is being praised as one of the best looking games this generation, and it's probably Xbox's most anticipated. A semi-open world fantasy RPG that includes multiple magic and combat playstyles all in one character. We've only seen several minutes of combat in short runs, and Xbox told us this AAA juggernaut from Playground Games is coming in 2025, but expect it to quietly delay and move to 2026. Playground Games doesn't miss, and this has to come out at its best. Clockwork Revolution is in Exile's first major AAA action adventure game, a first-person immersive RPG in the vein of Fallout and Bioshock. You wield time-bending powers with a steampunk universe. You can expect a lot of gold and silver ornate weapons and cool abilities like stopping, slowing, and reversing time. It captures that feeling of rediscovering games like when we first played Bioshock and the exploration and loot RPG mechanics that we love from the core Fallout games. Clockwork Revolution may see a release date in late 2025 or just afterwards. Stave Decay 3 has been a long time coming from Undead Labs, and it has made an incredible visual improvement, and the animation upgrades are on display here. Their latest trailer only showcases about 15 to 20 seconds of real behind the controls gameplay, but from what we've seen so far, it's super impressive, 
and Undead Labs is hoping to get their third zombie survival simulator out in 25 or 2026. Perfect Dark is Crystal Dynamics and the Initiative Studios reimagining of the 2000s Joanna Dark. And some safe decisions were made in portraying the young female operative. But in this place, we get Mirror's Edge style parkour free running and first person takedowns a la Splinter Cell. Subterfuge hacking and stealth round out the pacing of the gameplay. We may not see Perfect Dark's release though until 2026. A new Halo is coming in Unreal Engine 5 and 343 is now dubbed Halo Studios, creating a true next generation Halo game with multiple biomes and lifelike visuals, even showcasing the return of the Flood. The core DNA gunplay of Halo will be fully transferred over to UE5 and modernizing what fans have endured over the past decade as Halo fell. Highly detailed weapons, characters, and world elevating Halo above its core standard with new leadership and directors. Halo Studios will be working on Halo 7 or the next mainline Halo campaign beyond Infinite and also branching out to multiple projects. They are changing the Halo recipe and finally modernizing console's best shooter. Outer Worlds 2 is, as insiders are reporting, remarkable and it's a shining crown and their best work from Obsidian Entertainment. This sequel to the 2019 game, Outer Worlds, is supposed to be more punchy, vibrant, and immersive. And the charismatic characters, an open galaxy, and an RPG is said to make major improvements in the graphics and gameplay to sail above the original Outer Worlds. We don't have a release window for this game, but Obsidian is looking to wrap this up in 2025 or possibly 2026. Forza Horizon 6 from Playground Games has been long awaited. Normally every other year, it has changed to possibly a four-year development cycle. There were rumors for a long time that the next installment would take place in Tokyo, and I believe this could be very true if Forza Horizon 6 could give us Tokyo Drift-style experience that we've always wanted, and even mix in some of the fan-favorite kart racing battle mechanics from Activision's Blur. Xbox now owns those IPs, and they could see a fresh new entry for Forza Horizon series that could actually be revealed and released at the end of 2025. Gears E-Day is easily the top most voted and anticipated Xbox game that is recently showcased, and this origin story of Marcus and Dom of Emergence Day when the Locusts first attacked their planet. The Coalition is pushing Unreal Engine 5 to its absolute limits. And the gameplay visuals, according to insiders, looks unbelievable. And the developers said what we see in this trailer is just how the game will look. Tom Warren of The Verge has also said that Gears is actually set for a release date at the end of 2025. If that's true, it would be amazing for Xbox fans who've been waiting this long for their next Gears game. Mandalorian Online has been a long rumored and insider driven concept that a AAA co-op and multiplayer based Mandalorian game would be created by either ZeniMax or another big studio. But ZeniMax is working on a AAA MMO style RPG game that could either be fantasy based like Elder Scrolls Online or a new or current franchise. But ZeniMax says the game is based with big level design, cinematics and missions and a strong focus on the narrative experience. So it looks like ZeniMax's next big game after Elder Scrolls Online could be even bigger. Blade is a Marvel game created by Arcane Leon and is set to be a first-person vampire slayer game from the great minds that brought us Deathloop and Dishonored. They are definitely taking their time as Blade may be set as late as 2026 or 2027. But we've yet to see gameplay and the developers have stated it's quite a ways out. But with their style paired with halftone comic graphics promises to deliver a bloody violent and visceral experience, and Blade might actually release on all platforms simultaneously. Elder Scrolls 6 has been announced as early as 2018. It might not see a full reveal and release until a decade later in 2028. But Xbox stated last year that Elder Scrolls 6 might come out in 2026. Bethesda really needs to take their time and go back to the core mechanics and structure to recreate the magic we enjoyed from the previous Elder Scrolls games and even the Fallout series that are so closely related. Fans can't wait to see what Elder Scrolls looks like, but I have a suspicion that we might actually see that concept next year. 
Blizzard Entertainment Studio is reportedly in the early stages of developing a shooter set in the StarCraft universe. StarCraft World is being led by creative director of the older Far Cry series games, which leads some to believe that StarCraft World could be an open-world action-adventure third-person or probably a first-person shooter. Fans have been asking for StarCraft to return in some way, and Xbox has a bevy of real-time strategy games already, so this new shooter RPG game from Blizzard would be several years out but is a promising prospect. Project Maverick is a partnership with People Can Fly, the team behind Outriders and Bulletstorm, who are working on a brand new IP exclusive to Xbox. Possibly an online co-op game, hopefully this new Maverick game is leaning more toward Bulletstorm's experience than Outriders, but yet we may see another year go by before we finally see what Project Maverick is and when it will come out. Tony Hawk has made many attempts to resurface and its only true success was with Tony Hawk Pro Skater Remaster in 2019. Activision is very much interested in bringing back the Tony Hawk franchise and Tony Hawk Returns, a game that would borrow heavily from the original first two games, is exactly what fans want. And the sales of that remaster have proven that it still has legs. The question is, will Tony Hawk truly make his return from Activision and Xbox? Everwild has certainly been a thorn in the side of Rare as they have revealed it as early as 2019 and showed it directly afterwards. And the game is apparently buried under a full rework. As far as we know, Rare is still working on rebuilding the concept and possibly creating a Viva Pinata meets Pal World game where the main focus is to combat enemies and tame creatures to build your settlement and live in this world with multiplayer co-op. I'm not holding my breath for a new reveal of Everwild, but I do know the game is not dead. Spyro 4 is rumored to be the new project from Toys for Bob. Xbox is sorely in need of a platformer. With Banjo basically confirmed not to be in the works by Phil Spencer, they realize that Spyro has more staying power as a platformer, but Spyro 4 is probably a few years out from reveal. Activision's new Elsewhere Entertainment Studio is working on a brand new AAA IP that quote, creatives that worked on the Uncharted, Destiny, Last of Us, and Cyberpunk games. This sounds like a futuristic single player action adventure campaign, something we don't get often outside of Call of Duty from Activision. This project is just in beginning stages, so we may not see a reveal for it until the end of the generation, but it does sound incredible. Fallout 5 is at this point just a white paper from Todd Howard. The team at Bethesda is not in full production until Elder Scrolls 6 launches at the end of this generation, but Fallout 5 is definitely on the roadmap and is a major plan for the long-awaited true sequel to Fallout. What little we do know about Fallout 5 is that it will likely take place in America to lampoon the post-apocalyptic setting. But basing the graphic and visual improvements that Starfield is built upon, Fallout 5 should look absolutely insane. Even if it's only releasing in 2035, close to the end of the real world apocalypse. We just looked at 30 games in the roadmap for Xbox coming out as soon as next month. The major investment into these 30 studios has taken a while to pay off for fans waiting on the Xbox platform, especially people waiting for Xbox Game Pass. But the output of all these games and the promise of big new adventures that will push the industry forward with visuals, immersion, impactful gameplay seems to be palpable for the long generation of waiting. But Xbox still has the obvious problem of delaying games, releasing them undercooked, and some of their games have been undeniably perfect. So if they can strike a balance of all these things and deliver most of these games throughout the generation and elevate it with new hardware, then we have a lot to look forward to. This is Cold Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Wow, a bunch of games finally for Xbox. And a big chunk of these games have already been announced. They have trailers. We've seen gameplay. And the worst part is a lot of them were shown as early as 2020 and 2021 at Showcase. And they're still not out. And there's still no release date for them. And I don't know how soon they're going to come out. And it's taking forever to wait for games on Xbox. But they have so many things in the works, like the partnerships that they've worked with other studios to bring games as well as all of these teams that they've bought together and merged into their studio suites has really been helpful for expecting games and knowing what to get on Xbox because they have a bunch of different genres. And I'm pretty excited to see what they do. I do have 
a bunch of studios in the list that I look at kind of like, hmm, are you going to be able to do it? And you really can't say these days. It's really your, the tried and true studios have been having a really hard time delivering. And some of those new studios or the new blood have really surprised shock and odd fans with really great games. Maybe compulsion might be one of those that really brings out a good game. That would be amazing to see. If you ended up enjoying this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new weekly content. If you want to further support what we do here on the Cole Easter channel, you can do that by hitting the join button below. It's over here, I think. Uh, yeah, hit that button. I'll join you into the channel membership, and that'll get you early access for videos, monthly merch giveaways, and so much more. Uh, thanks for doing all you can. You can also uh, join the Patreon if you want. But otherwise, if you just subscribe, that would be really great, too. We appreciate all of your support. It's been great to be able to just talk about gaming with all of you and just have these discussions. Also check us out at the ecstasy podcast. That's every Monday night, 5 PM Pacific time, 8 PM Eastern. We're there live for a couple hours with middle-aged game guy and guests to talk about the weekly gaming news. And there we'll get right into it and dive into maybe share some leaked information as it comes along. Thanks for checking that out as well. But I want to know what you're most excited about which one shocked and surprised you. There is one game on this list that people will probably talk about in the comments, but if they didn't get this far, but if you did, the one game is the Mandalorian game. I really am not sure it's a Mandalorian game. That's just something the insiders have said, and they've made articles about that. But I think Sandy Max online has to do something different. It's probably not going to be another fantasy RPG. Maybe it's going to be another franchise brought to life. I don't know. I can't wait to see. Let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're there, as I always say, please be nice. OD is Hideo Kojima's pet project that shopped around other studios. And Xbox picked it up. It'll likely be a multi-platform game and dives into interactive PCs that are so lifelike. It looks like full motion video. I'm not sure how much gameplay we'll see from OD, otherwise known as Overdrive. I'm not sure we'll ever see OD's release until the end of this generation. Towerborn is in early access right now, and it feels much like our favorite side-schooler beat-em-ups with a fantasy coat of literal paint. Each character class feels different and levels alongside your set of characters as you travel along a massive sprawling map made of mini missions and bosses. Towerborn is set for a full release sometime in 2025. Contraband is a super ambitious four or eight player online co-op heist game set in the 1970s of an archipelago in Indonesia. Contraband is made by Avalanche, the team behind Just Cause, and features a diverse gameplay loop of driving, shooting out of old muscle cars, breaking into banks, and trying to collect as much money as possible before the mission ends. There are high stakes car chases and the rumors of strong diversity representation, even with a playable character in a wheelchair. It's very strange that Avalanche refuses to say a word about this game in over three years, and the last we heard is it needed a delay or more. But will we see Contraband next year? City and Entertainment is also working on a concept for a sequel, Grounded 2. The original became a fan favorite with over 20 million people playing and is now multi-platform with a TV show in the works as well. Grounded 2 would take the new teens into multiple backyards and up the ante for this Honey, I Shrunk the Kid open world survival game that rises above most other building and survival games. Grounded would be a game release we would either see at the end of the generation or soon after. Project Mara from Ninja Theory is a side project that is pushing the boundaries of digital recreation of real life materials, lighting, and dives into the experience of a broken mind and shows these lifelike visuals that are only available in Unreal Engine 5. Personally, I have doubts that this will be a conventional game, even though Ninja Theory has stated it will have gameplay. Project Mara has been in the works for several years, and maybe we'll see it this generation.